Amen. All right. <laughs> you may all be seated. I won't tell you to shake. I won't tell you to shake anybody this time. All right. Um, so that the people outside can be a part of this. Not if we're inside. People outside, just give your shout of praise. <laughs> All right. Amen and amen. All right. We are here for a prophetic moment. Okay. Uh, it's a prophetic moment. Um, the reason why we're here this day is that I was in deep prayer. I have no plans. I have never in the history of this ministry done an anniversary. Uh, but I was in deep prayer, and I wasn't thinking about it. And it just came up in my spirit that do your 30th anniversary and go to Songota and ask my servant to come in and speak on that day. And the date he gave to me was September 7th. So I received it, and I went, and the request was graciously granted. <laughs> Amen. Now, I have said this story, I've said this story many times um, before, I mean, to the church. I saw Bishop Oedipo for the first time in 1988 at the Holy Ghost Convention in Ibadan. And he was wearing a green Agbadan, or gray Agbadan. He came to speak. His session had finished. He just came to say something. And I couldn't believe what I was hearing. So I tapped the person beside me. I said, who is this person speaking? He said, he's Bishop Edith. I said, where is this church? He said, Kaduna. I said, so if I want to hear him, how will I hear him again? He said, he'll come back next year. I said, so I'll wait for one year. He said, you have to wait for one year, except you want to go to Kaduna. He comes once a year to Ibadan to speak. So I waited a year. On that day, I checked the poster. I said I was going. Rain began to fall. I defied the rain. I walked in the rain to the bus stop in Songo and took a bus to um, Ojo, where is where the meeting was holding. And that was 1989, I believe. And I heard him say, uh, God has given us an instruction to move to Lagos. I, I thought I didn't hear well. So I, I moved to Lagos. So when I got to Lagos, I don't know whether he's here today. Uh, yeah, my friend, um, Pastor Sholadio, I went to see him in his house. And there was a flyer there. And I looked at the flyer. I said, ah, you don't know this man. He said, I said, so is there any church in his area? Let me take you. You will hear something today. So we looked out for Winners Chapel. It was, uh, they, were, they had just started in um, like an, uh, three floors. And we started going every week and all of that. And I must say this here, that um, my understanding of ministry, uh, the breakthrough inside my consciousness to be able to understand ministry, I will never have transited. Because the history was that all the people that did campus fellowship back then were not transiting into ministry. But that breakthrough in understanding was what brought about that transition into ministry. And uh, the day he ordained me, he told me, he said, I'll come. Uh, I just don't want to go back into the story. But a minister in this country at that time, who was a ranking minister, told me, he said, this man loves you more than he loves me. That was how deep it was. All right? The day I was getting married here, when I left, my mother saw me here. She called me and said, look, look, you have a lot of friends in ministry. This is my mother. She said, but the person I know, just observe him, that supports you 100% with his heart is Bishop Oedipo. She said, you know, I don't answer. I said, I'm your mother. She said, I'm your mother. I'm telling you what I sensed as a mother, all right, in this place. Now, I won't go to Len because it's not a minister's conference. But there are things we take for granted in ministry today in Nigeria that were pioneered by him, that, that we take it for granted. Even this talking mentorship and all of this, we take it for granted. Those things were not like that in the past. It was somebody who pioneered it, somebody who showed us 
that loyalty pays, faithfulness pays, a heart of a servant is how you get the inheritance that God has, all right, for you. And let me just close by saying this. I was on the queue one day in a Starbucks coffee shop in, in, um, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This is not uh, New York or Washington, Milwaukee, all right, it's Milwaukee, yeah. And I was queuing, and the woman behind me, she must have been about a between 78 to 82 year old white lady. She just turned around and said, which country are you from? I said, Nigeria. And then she turned and looked, said, do you know Bishop David Oedipo? Ha! I said, on the queue to buy coffee, a white elderly lady is asking me this question. That shows the reach and the impact that this man has had on um, not just, I mean, Nancy Dufresne's was saying this a few weeks ago at the Southwest Believers Convention. She said something about him and said, you know, he has a voice, a loud voice. When he speaks, the body of Christ in the world hears. Let's rise to our feet and welcome to the worship. Congratulations. 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 There is nothing called best today. Best is tomorrow. Best is in quest. Best is in the future. If you call it best today, what will it be tomorrow? Bester? It's a form to say best practice. Good practice, okay. Better practice tomorrow. And better yet next tomorrow. It's been good. It shall be better. Yeah. Last 30 years, it's been good for this great ministry and for the set man, his wife, and the team. It shall be better. One of the things I caught early is that the part of the justified is as a shining light, ordained to shine more and more and more and more. Then I said, I'm not prepared for it better yesterday. That was back in 81. Not set for a better yesterday. That every year must be a plus on the previous. Every day a plus on the previous. Every week a plus on the, on the previous. That shall be your portion. Amen. That shall be your portion. Amen. For everyone joining us in this celebration, that shall be your portion. Amen. For every member of this great church, that shall be your portion. Amen. Jesus, thank you again for what you are doing in this great ministry. Thank you for your diverse helps and manifest grace. Thank you for growth. Thank you for expansion. And thank you for impact. Receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. Lord, let the coal of fire rest upon my tongue Amen. to prick people in their hearts Amen. on the right path. Amen. 
So let it be. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please, you may be comfortably seated. I'll start with these Proverbs 24, verse 13 and 14. I'm speaking on the subject unveiling the power of wisdom for impact in life and ministry. Unveiling the power of wisdom for impact in life and ministry. We are redeemed to live a life of impact. We are redeemed as the light of the world, which connotes we carry grace, pace-setting grace on our life. Trail blazing grace on our life. Path finding grace on our lives. And the salt of the earth, the salt, to preserve the world in which we live from decadence. To give taste to the tasteless world. Salt is a major preservative. We are the salt. Things are not permitted to decay around us. By the mystery of redemption. You say, but why? As many people living without anything adding to the environment where they live, they don't know. My people are going to captivity because they do not have knowledge. They don't know. I found out at 16, I've been redeemed as a priest and a king to reign on the earth. I don't know what a new convert was looking for in Revelation, but I travel around. I go Revelation, go Lamentation, go Jeremiah, go anywhere. And I say, what? On the spot, a royal mentality engulfed me. It was month of March. 1970. And when I go out, I would say, Well, you can't go out like this. No, they will go and change. Will the king shout on the road? No, no, no. And the king wrestle? No. Now, unfortunately, you know, in the charismatics, we celebrate the things we hear, the things we read, and the things we study. But that's not where it is. It's what to find from what to hear that refines and defines your life. What we find, what we find. And when that has found it, there shall be a reward. There shall be a proof that to find it. Proverbs 24, 13 and 14. My son, eat the honey, for it is sweet the honeycomb which is to thy taste, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be to thy soul. And when thou hast found it, then there shall be reward, and the pleasure shall not be cut off. So it's not what we study that makes us, but what we find from our studies. I rejoice at thy word as one that has found a great spoil. So finding always results in rejoicing. Joy is an authentic proof of finding. You can't find the missing treasure and not people rejoice with me. I found my coin that's missing. So the acid test for finding is joy and rejoicing.
So wisdom is what we find from the book. We find. We have to search. It as seek it, find it. We find. We find from the book. Now, we have a clear reminder that we have been redeemed for a life of impact. That's what Jesus said. Now, he went on for that to say, as the Father sent me, so saying, I, you. And who are you, sir? I am the root and the offspring of David the bright and the morning star. What does that mean? It means there's a star in you if you are saved. There's a star in you if you are saved. But why are there not many stars in their respective endeavors in life? Many have left their field of play to be a fan. Yeah. Ego, ego. Yeah. They have left the field of play to become a chartered fan and gaze at others as they are doing it. Only children play in the marketplace. Is <laughs> there like children play in the marketplace? We have pipe, you have no dance. Adults do business in the marketplace. And study to be quiet and do your own business. What's your problem with other people? No one's success is reason for another man's failure. The sky is too wide for two balls to collide. Billions of air of birds in the air, yet the sun is not shielded. The sun is still shining through. As if you went to bed, they are still in the sky. There's a place for every child of God in space. All we need to do is to learn how to fly a spacecraft. That's all we need. He came down to the entire children of Israel. If you will hearken to my voice, without to do what I tell you to do, I will set you on high above all nations of the earth. I'm going above the shadows into the presence. <laughs> Forty years ago, the Lord said to me from that scripture, He said, My son, there's a place for you on top if you're interested. I said, yeah, Lord, I'm interested. Then whatever I tell you to do, do it. Now you confess it, do it. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. That's your flight into space. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. My opinion is irrelevant. The truth is truth. Take it or leave it. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. I was chatting with my sons now back home before we left, I said, wait a minute. People need to, come to become true to themselves. <laughs> you are angry with a big church. Now, do you want a small one? <laughs> Somebody's son graduated or daughter, and you say, for what? Do you want your son to fail? People are not sincere. Somebody's prosper, you are very bothered. Do you want poverty? People are not sincere, so they settle down on things that don't concern them at all. We're in a race, oh. whether you understand that or not, we're in a race. <laughs> and one receives the prize. So wrong. Not so comment, so wrong. <laughs> that you may obtain. Now, friends, can I tell you this? I have not taken my first leave. So I'm a runner. I know what it means to run. Is it wrong? No. I'm busy running. 
Do you rest? Oh, yes. If I don't rest, won't you find me here? I rest. I have my strategies for doing it. It is knowing who we are that determines what we dare. Knowing who we are is what determines what we dare. There's a star in you, but I will say again, I've said several years, there is no star without a scar. And the scar of every star is sacrifice. People hate that word. Sacrifice? No, we're here to enjoy. <laughs> there are people who don't die. A hundred years after they're dead, they're still living. They're still speaking. Though he were dead, yet he's speaking. They paid a price to enter that realm. Somebody said to me, if everybody's on top, we'll be below. Those who don't know how to get to the top. <laughs> he said, oh, children of children, come on here. If you have to my voice, I will set you on high. What? He said, if all of us are now on high, who will be below? Those who don't know <laughs> that they belong there and go anywhere. So finding from the wisdom book of life, the Bible, is what makes wise. Finding what belongs to you and how to actualize it. Is what makes wise. Two scriptures. The word says, I'm from a child. Thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise. So it makes wise. <laughs> the wisdom comes with discovery. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The commandment of, of the Lord is pure, making wise the simple. So knowing what he commands and going for it makes wise. I've come here this morning not as a teacher, but to prophesy into your life the truth of heaven's agenda so you can connect. You are going places. You are going places. You are going places. You are going places. The power of wisdom for impact in life and ministry. What you celebrate, you attract. What you despise, you distract. Those who despise success, they don't see it. Those who celebrate the success of others, they attract it. Because every testimony is a pointer to your heritage. Psalm 119, verse 111. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever. Forever. You do it in one person, it's available for another. They are the rejoicing of my heart. So you rejoice at the testimonies of others to attract them. You attract your testimonies by rejoicing at the testimonies of others. Ten years before the Lord gave us the vision of a university, 
um, I'm very close to the oral use system. And so I would sit down on the field in the evening time and said, this is God. But it can happen anywhere else. This is God. We had, had no vision for university at all. I wasn't planning one. But I saw God in it. I didn't see the devil. I saw God in it. When God was asking us to start a university, I took the team, the Adipaunia team, we spent one week walking from department to department and making inquiries as we already programmed. I had a good time with Richard. Rejoice at good things. It will then be your turn. Rejoice. Rejoice. When the first Christian university started in, about, in, in Benin, I was poor. A little boy. I, I love the place. I, I want to see it stand. There was no idea of a university. Rejoice at good things. We need to cope to that in our business and everything. You have a shop and somebody customers are going to the other one and you start eyeing the person. You start looking down on him. He might be using charm even though you are in the same church. Somebody soul is changing. Yeah. Can I help you say with me? No one's success is enough reason for another man's failure. As I rejoice with success, I attract my own just success. I attract my own success. The Lord spoke to me and said, anytime I send you somewhere, speak the word in season as I give them to you. I have my note. I know your time. I'm working with it. But somebody just bailed out now from trouble. <laughs> he that hates the hand of God on his brother abides in the dead. First John 3.15. So hatred of good things disconnect you from it. Enjoy good things. Rejoice with them. And then your turn is there. Can I hear your amen? Amen. Can I hear your amen? Amen. We are in for the best of time. What is impact? Impact is all about making outstanding contributions in one's field of endeavor. It's not about making a name. Making outstanding contribution. Not about carrying a title. It's making outstanding contributions in one's field of endeavor. Making the most of one's field of play. And it's a product of commitment, tireless commitment. You cannot be committed and not be creative. You cannot be creative and not be productive. And, not be produ and you cannot be productive and not be successful. You can't grow your success and not be impactful. It begins with commitment. Do I know where I belong? How committed am I to that cause? That's where it begins. Creativity stems out of commitment. Quality commitment. If you are committed, you'll be creative. If you are creative, you'll be productive. If you are productive, you'll be successful. If you keep growing your success, you end up impactful. It's a journey. So impact is not a destination, it's an adventure. 
aim part is not a destination, it's an adventure. You are found faithful, you are over five cities. Found more faithful, over 10 cities. Found more faithful, over 100 cities. Found more faithful, over a nation. Far more faithful. You just keep going. Everything global begins local. Even Jesus, the Savior of the world, arrived in a manger. Began his journey as a babe. Grew to become an adolescent. Before he became my beloved son, who am I am well pleased. There was no impact as a babe. No, a babe is a body. In terms of responsibility that we have to give. Adolescent needs to be watched so it don't go, doesn't go off. You can't put a key in his hand, a car key. You want, you want him to die. So it's a, it's a journey. Impact is a journey. It answers little by little by little by little. Our church began with four people in Kaduna. Grew to six with plenty of prayers. Grew to 10. Then go to 21 and I say, Jesus, this church can't be growing like this. <laughs> when I'm 100 years old, it will be only 1,000 without diminishing it. Uh, you know, returns dimension or factor. And it's not just saying that we now went to prayer and fasting. Why is the church not growing? Impact does not answer on the bedroom. It doesn't answer on your bed. You don't win the war in the bedroom. It's in the battlefront. So much ago, God said, you should come and collect my mantra. I said, collect it. <laughs> collect it. <laughs> collect it. Is that how they collect something? <laughs> collect it. <laughs> it's a journey. But one step after another, the longest journey is made. You are going forward. Amen. You are going forward. You are going forward. Amen. You are going forward. Amen. It will be clear that God has touched you in this convention. Amen. All of the things we have heard since this event began, we answer in your life. Amen. But the wisdom of God is in the deep. You can't find a shark in a stream in the deep sea. The treasures of life are in the deep. So it's a diligent search that gets you there. If you watch the film of divers and order to study those sea creatures, a lot of task. The wisdom of God, oh, the depth both of the wisdom and knowledge of God are unsearchable as its ways and it's past, find, past finding out. Wise believers are dedicated seekers. Dedicated seekers. Before they can become great finders. When you lose a thing, you have to say you lit a candle and you thoroughly sweep. You sweep through scriptures until you find it. You lit a candle and you sweep through scriptures until you find it. Launch out into the deep for a drought. Not in the shallow waters, in the deep, you can only find some tadpoles in the stream. 
a drought is only available in the sea. But it requires the deep to connect with the deep. So it requires our spirit, our inner deep, to connect with the spirit of God through which we take delivery of wisdom. Isaiah 26 and verse 9. It talks about my soul will seek you in the night season. Night, there's a desperation. You engage your spirit, man. My whole spirit within me will seek for you. When judgment lands, the world will know. So we have no choice but to get <laughs> truly committed to the demand of finding the solutions to issues of interest to us. It's amazing. I had some volumes recently called Treasures of Life. They are my findings from my diaries that are published in case somebody else may need it. I've written pages this morning from my finding table. I'm just out of a meeting, like you know, this morning. Light is sweet. It's a beautiful thing for the eyes to behold the sun. You can't stumble walking in the light. When I started teaching each free marriage, they almost stoned me. No, they don't have stones here. Let's see what happened when he gets married. They were winking their nose. I found what they have not known. I committed myself to my findings. And 42 years after, zero stress, zero strain. Please check out. Be true to yourself. Commit to making findings. There's an answer in the book, no matter the question. It's only when the book is closed that weeping continues. There's an answer in the book to every question that relates to you in redemption. It relates to me in redemption. There's an answer in the book. Can we find such a man as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? In as much as God has shown you all these, there's no one as wise and discreet as you are. Joseph, take over. When the takeover era of the church, by the manifold wisdom of God in action, <laughs> according to the eternal purpose of God, which the purpose in Christ Jesus before the world began, is the takeover era of the church. The takeover will come through the, the operation of the manifold wisdom of God in all these infinite varieties, in all aspects. It's coming. Ephesians 3, 8 to 11. Amplified by It's coming. According to the eternal purpose of God, that's God's eternal purpose, to sweep across the earth with the manifold wisdom of God that will humble the pride of the world Come now, please tell us how you're doing it. For it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be established above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. Saying, teach us the way to go and walk in it. That's what become of your business, your ministries, your various endeavors. 
as you choose to walk in the wisdom of God. It's not abracadabra wisdom. They are wisdom drawn from the facts of scriptures and from your fellowship in the Holy Ghost. So real. So real. So real. But it requires engaging beyond our intellect. We engage our spirit. The spirit of God bears witness with my spirit. It has that we are the children of God. So it relates with our spirit. And that spirit of God is the spirit of wisdom. You check Isaiah 11, verse 1 and 2. There are seven spirits mentioned there, which we call the spirit of Christ, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, of knowledge, of counsel, of understanding, of might, and of the fear of the Lord. Now, if you leave the spirit of the Lord, the anointing, and you leave might, which connotes physical, mental strength, you have five remaining that have to do with wisdom. No wonder they say Jesus carried is the spirit and the power. I mean, the wisdom and the power of God. Wisdom is the principal content of the spirit of Christ. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's how to enlist, that's how to register. Amen. Amen. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You know, you're the holy is understanding. So you put that together, you have five over seven. No wonder the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. With all you're getting, get understanding. Sir, so I prayed for wisdom like never before in my life. After I was called to ministry, I didn't know ministry. So I need to find out by asking God for wisdom. So he directed me to biographies of great ministries. I soaked myself in them. I borrowed the brain of many others. So I wasn't, no guesswork. No guesswork. No guesswork. Please know that Holy was far beyond speaking in tongues. Far beyond. Knowing what to do is far more valuable than crying for help. That's why only men of the spirit, women of the spirit, can assess this deep wisdom of God. For the spirit of God searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now, here it is, and this is where what we're talking about is far beyond intellectual thing. He said, Whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Not mighty works, mighty works. <laughs> the wisdom from above is the wisdom of mighty works not mighty grammar. <laughs> not applause winning statement. Mighty works. Is the core validation of divine wisdom. Mighty works. How manifold are thy works, O God? In wisdom as thou made them all, the earth is full of thy riches. Psalm 104 and verse 24. Mighty works is the biblical validation of this wisdom. Matthew 13, verse 54. Whence has this man this wisdom? And these, what wisdom is this that's given unto him? That such mighty works are done by his hands. Mark 6, 2 also repeats that. So it's the wisdom of mighty works. That's what's happening all around now. We are saying in the church. God's wisdom is coming on display. 
and mighty works are coming forth. Amen. Mighty works are coming forth. Amen. <laughs> Men and women in the church are operating in that realm of mighty works. It may look ordinary now, but it's growing up. It's growing up. It's growing up. It's growing up. So don't lag behind Join this chariot. Start craving for an endowment of the spirit of wisdom. We are told God founded the earth by his wisdom. He established the heavens by his, I mean by his power. He established the heavens by his wisdom and set them forth by his discretion. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 12. That is humbling expansion and impact. You'll find a little company here, before you wake up to know it, it's in five continents, employing labor heavily. You find some individuals here today that have only about five people or ten in their setup, and you wake up suddenly, 500,000 that are feeding fine and working well and adding value. Come on, give the Lord a big hand of praise. The big thing here is this, the Bible is the principal resource. The Bible is the principal resource for access to these deep things of God. It's one book that answers all questions. Inside that book is contained all the words of this life. He said to Peter, go to the temple and speak to them all the words of this life. Acts 5 and verse 20. And his ways are higher than our ways. That's why they call us heretics. When we believe what God says, he says hey, hey, hey. You, you don't look normal. <laughs> you know what Paul said? In the way we they call heresy, so self I my God, believing all things. You can't believe all things and not become, be called heretics. They said to Jesus, you, you are a blasphemer. You have a devil. In fact, not only a devil, a prince of devils. He was out of this world. They couldn't see it. He said, now, can I tell you something? John 10, 37. Believe me for the very work's sake. <laughs> Can't you see the proof? Like I always say, only fools doubt proofs. Does God heal? People said they, they were healed. You say it's not true. Are you in their body? <laughs> Somebody said he caught a word in church and his business just blew something. <laughs> What's your problem? <laughs> it's beyond this fear, sir. There is no intellectual juggernaut that qualifies to appraise the truth. No, it's beyond them. It's like a baby being asked to appraise the test of a PhD individual. He can't. It's a body to him. He doesn't know what to do with it. So don't mind when they don't understand you. They cannot. It's a natural man cannot receive the things of the Lord God because they are foolishness to him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually designed. Amen. Amen. But when you make your personal findings, you become unshakable. You become unshakable. Can I say blind, blinded, blind, blind, you know, as if you are blind. You can't pick it. It's your turn. It's your turn. Yeah. The good thing is, this is the heritage of all children of God. Wisdom is justified of our children. It's the heritage 
of the children of God, Matthew 11, 19. So it's your heritage. And isn't that simple? Every sheep has the wisdom of a sheep. He bleeds without going to school. It's inside him. Hmm? Every cock crows. It's inside him. So the wisdom of every offspring is the wisdom of his source. So if God is your father, and they call him God only wise, come on now. Your father is called God only wise. Wiser than the wisest. God only wise in his own class. And you are his child. Then you have his wisdom. All we need to know is how to turn it loose. And that's what we will close on this morning. How do I assess this wisdom? Or how do I manifest, not assess, by the dimension you have assessed it? But how do I manifest this wisdom? One, be born again. With the evidence of the fruit of the Spirit. For by their fruit we shall know them. Not by their proclamation. By their fruit. Be born again with, because I become a fashion today. Be born again with the evidence of the fruits of the Spirit. As listed in Galatians 5 and verse 22. And Jesus said with his mouth, By their fruits we shall know them, whether they are born again or not. A lot is going on. Someday we are going to arrive there. And we shall enter there one by one. No one here will miss it. No one here will miss it. Amen. No one here will miss it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Be born again with evidence of the fruits of the Spirit. It's a barometer for measuring whether we are in the faith or not. It's examine yourself whether you be in the faith or not. That's why I say, work out your own salvation. Don't sleep with it. Don't let it slip over your hand. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We shall all make it. There is no shareholder in heaven. So there is no way to get in through another means than through Jesus, the way. And Jesus is the living word of God. We shall get there. Number two, make working in the fear of God your lifestyle. Let nothing that God says in this world look. That's not my view. What view? Let God be true and all men liars. The fear of God is not G3, you know, running around with phobia. It's about giving God his reverence by reverencing his word. There are people in church, they open certain scriptures in their study, in their own room, and he speaks against them. They flip it off. <laughs> He's speaking to fix you and me, to make us ready for his agenda to make us fulfill his purpose in our lives. His word carries four major factors. The ways of God are known in his word, doctrines, and then reproofs which connote warnings. So anytime you open a thing that's speaking to you directly, it's a warning. I'm warning you, I'm warning you, I'm warning you. You say, no, I don't want, so you close it. Be angry and say, no, anger is my, just in my nature. My forefather has it. My father has it. <laughs> uh, 
mean they just justify himself against the truth. Yeah, we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. The fear of God. Letting God be God at all times. Letting his will be finer in our lives. Number three. One of the greatest beneficiaries of wisdom in scriptures is Solomon. He asked for it. What do you want me to do for you? Lord, give me wisdom. People hardly ask. If any man lack wisdom, that means, it doesn't mean he's not wise. It means for this issue, he doesn't know what to do. Let him ask of God. James 1, verse 5. If we give it to him liberally without calling him a fool. But let him ask in faith. Nothing we worry. The way that wavers, it's like a wave of the sea, toss here and there. Let another man think he shall receive anything from God. Asking as the only source of the way out. The only source. Most of the times, we engage fasting along with the prayer. For among the blessings of fasting is outbreak of light. Wisdom and light and understanding like the wisdom of the gods. They require fasting and prayer to find it. I read Dr. Copeland's book four times. I didn't see it. I was helping to preach it for him but I had not found it. So I went on a three-day fast with my Bible and two of those books. Third day, I found it. When I found it, I knew. I spawned, yay, I can never be poor. 42 years ago. 42 years ago. I've made a few findings, quite some, I believe, through prayer and fasting the way out, the way forward, the way upward. Isaiah 58, is this not the fast that I've chosen? Then shall the light break forth at the morning. Jesus said in Mark 2.20, can you make the children of the bridegroom to fast at the bridegroom and sit with them? But the day comes when the Bible shall be taken away from them. Then shall they fast in those days. We are in the fasting era of the church. It's one of the platforms for assessing the manifold wisdom of God. So, choo 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 24 hours a day, who will help you? We are in the fasting era of the church. And among the things we look for is outbreak of light. Here we are at one stage, we must move to the next, and how do we get to the next Jesus? That's so important. And then number four, crave for the endowment of the spirit of wisdom. It goes to enlarge one's capacity to find and to apply appropriately. Make demand for it. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of power and wisdom. You saw that explosive wisdom on the day of Pentecost? That's the Holy Spirit for you. It will bring to your remembrance all things as they are needed, all things, whenever they are needed. Whatever you have learned, you have learned it so it can remind you. You can't remind you what you have not learned. This is so crucial, it's so vital. 
that we engage these platforms all of the time. And now the big one, the study of the world. Because the Bible is God's wisdom imprint. Luke 11, 49, and the wisdom of God says, the world is the wisdom of God imprint. So we keep exploring, exploring to get wiser. Proverbs 9.9, 9, the word says, give instruction to a wise man and he will yet be wiser. There's a wiser level. You are wise, you get wiser and wiser and wiser and wiser. Growing in the wisdom of God. So important. Watch, there are two major characters that went through to the end with strength. Daniel and Paul. Daniel was endowed with wisdom, that's okay. So he got the endowment of the spirit of wisdom. But he said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Daniel 9, and verse 2. The endowment of that spirit is so unique that it could capture a dream that somebody has dreamt on his bed in details and give interpretation. That's no mere gift. <laughs> he said, this one is not given to me because I'm wiser than anybody else. So it's a gift. So he had that endowment, Daniel 2.30. It was so profound that the king bowed down and worshipped Daniel, verse 46. Right? <laughs> so, Daniel took over. That's how the church will take over. That's how the church will take over. Amen. Daniel took over by the display of this wisdom from above. Daniel took over. That it was a man endowed, gifted, and deal with the spirit of wisdom. Two, it was a man of prayer and fasting. Praying three times a day. Like we are told in Daniel 6 and verse 5. Right? Now, fasting to find Daniel 10, 1 to 12. And yet reading to understand. So it's not one thing that we run around with. Yes, you are endowed. Praise God. Yes. When you get to any crossroad, pray. It's not showing up fast. And then get down to search to know the appropriate steps to find your way to the next level. Can I hear your amen? amen. Somebody's blessed. Amen. You are the one. Amen. You are the one. You are the one. Amen. Never mind the world, when it cannot be logically explained, then it's not proven. How can you explain three able-bodied men cast into the furnace, uh, wooden bone, that there was any spare smell of fire on them? How do you explain that? Is there any biology for that? <laughs> any psychology for that? But there's, a, there's an evidence that it happened. What can you use to stop the lions who are hungry from eating you up? This wisdom works. That's the conclusion. This wisdom works. So get down to start working it. Don't wait for things to happen. Start working at making them happen. Don't wait for wisdom to jump on your head. Start working to get wiser. Start seeking to find. Keep engaging what you find 
and get wiser by the day. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. We made some findings in the Covenant University platform. The word is, no, it's not same before. Why, it's from above. It's from above. People call, they call our system, come and tell us how you're doing it, including global settings. There is nothing about that would not be superior to the things here. Your business can be translated. You can be translated in your career. It depends on what you find in your search, what you find by engaging the demands of finding. It's your turn. Amen. It's your turn. Amen. People have heard me say, I'm not surprised that we're where we are, or that I'm surprised we are not there. Why? The things I have found has painted the picture of where we are going. They have painted the picture of where I'm going, where we are going. Can I conclude with this if I have a minute more? Now, when we wanted our cell system to grow, I thought we have stayed around some spot for so long. I didn't just wish it or pray it. We bought, I bought 400 copies of Building Successful Home Sales by Yonggi Cho. Gave to our 400 pastors to study. To make the following findings. What are we doing that we should not be doing? What are we doing that we're not doing well enough? And what are we not doing that we should be doing? So they came back and we did a review of the findings. The sales system jumped up to almost twice by findings. By what? I, Daniel, understood by books. When I thought we were exhausted what we found there, I charted more research materials on cell ministry. And we jump, boom, again. Then we are set for the next time, and God gave an order to double the number of cells that we had. So I said, now, let's do this. Let's mark out those who have, done, so, who have grown cells successfully, replicated cells successfully. Let's find out what they did. So we sampled 160 through our records, 160 individuals. So they made submissions of what they did. Now we ran a seminar one Saturday morning. The sales grew 21,000 in one year. Sales, not people, by finance. It's interesting, sir. Testimonies are part to reproduce itself. So let's harvest what those folks did by inspiration. Let's now see if we can translate it to others to engage with. And it went up. Our church didn't grow by chance. I was an apron student of Yonge Cho since 85. 85. Zero stress in pastoring. Zero. But heavy preparation for services. Nobody can eat raw food, you have to cook it. That's why nothing of value is free. Everything of value carries a cost. I'm speaking to my co-liberals, ministers of the gospel. Let's get down to work. Businessmen, stay focused. Jack of all trades, master of none. Get committed to what you are doing. And never leave God out of your equation. You'll never find a solution. Let God remain at the center of your heart, the center of your affairs. Hmm. For all things, all together, for, for good. To them that love God, all things, all together, for good. To them that love God are now operating according to his purpose. You belong to a church? Belong. Serve Jesus. You are not serving church? Serve Jesus. Hmm. Not with high service, as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. 
Don't leave God out of the equation. We never find a solution. I heard that 48 years ago. Matthew 33 is my intoxication. I know you need this thing, but seek you for the kingdom of God and righteousness. And all these things that others are dying to get shall be added to you. Be blessed. Stand to your feet, everyone. Give the Lord Jesus a big hand of praise. The glory belongs to him. Come and give it to him. For showing us the way to go, give him the glory. For opening the door to the next phase of your life, give him the glory. For showing us how to get wiser by the day, give him the glory. No one among us today, and those who will hear this message tomorrow, shall ever be stagnated again. Yeah. Everyone's part shall be shining more and more and more yeah. till the perfect day. Yeah. And for this church, we're celebrating 38th year anniversary, we are going forward. Yeah. You are going forward. Yeah. This church will never know a setback. The sad man over this church, we never saw a setback. Amen. I pray that today we add extra color to this ministry. Amen. And for every co-minister available here today, may this service add extra color to your ministry. Amen. Together we are there. Amen. We shall make it. Amen. Triumphantly on this earth Amen. and gloriously in eternity. Amen. Triumphantly on this earth and gloriously in eternity. Amen. I therefore proclaim God's blessings upon this commission. Amen. I pray for grace to keep multiplying. Amen. I pray for the fire of the Holy Ghost to keep coming from this altar. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.